Hi Flosstube and Instagram friends, my name is Kim and this is going to be a special edition Flosstube. I'm not going to be talking specifically about any of my stitching projects, but more I want to share with you how I have taken to um, using a thrift store frame and being able to resize it, to modify it, to fit, fit my particular stitched pieces. Uh, I do ask that you would give me a few moments just to uh, share some what I feel is to be very important information before we begin. Uh, I cannot stress enough um, that while I am very excited to be able to share what I do with you, uh, I am not an expert. This is not really any kind of a tutorial. I am not a professional uh, woodworker. Um, I have, I take a lot of caution when using my power tools and I just, I'm a little anxious um, about anyone using power tools if you're not comfortable with them, if you're not familiar with them. Um, it just, I would really just stress that, that there are other ways for you to be able to uh, get frames that will fit your, your stitch pieces, whether it be through um, some, some of the other floss tubers have mentioned. I know Daylene is so grateful, has, uh, I think it's pictureframes.com, uh, Lindy Stitches, Stephanie, she had a, a wonderful stitched piece that she ordered something off of Etsy. Uh, Olivia at Pumpkin Hollow Quilts also has someone that she uses for some of her rustic framing. And I don't think any of them were terribly expensive. So uh, if, and I, and I will share a hand saw with you as well, but um, if you're going to use power tools, I just really, please, 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 I just use, use extreme caution. Take all the safety measures, um, or just, if you're not comfortable, don't, don't do it. Um, okay, so again, not a tutorial. If you've stumbled across this because of something that said framing, <laughs> uh, you may be completely horrified by the information I'm gonna share with you uh, and wanna hit that thumbs down button quite a few times. Uh, you know, if you have techniques, uh, tips, things that, you, that will help us out and you can leave a helpful comment down below, that would be wonderful. I do want to let you know, I wasn't aware, but it seems that YouTube will not allow commenters to provide links when you're leaving your comment. So just a heads up, if you do provide any kind of a link, it, it shows up in my notification page that you have left a comment and uh, I can I can see that maybe you've left a link there, and it, but it won't let me open it, it won't let me respond to it, no one in the comments will see it, it's not me deleting your comment, it, it just won't ever uh, show up. So there's that. Um, let me just uh, do the best I can to show uh, everything that I do. And hopefully, like I said, maybe you'll find a little something that will help you, even if it's just the formula that for measuring, uh, I guess it's formula is the best word to describe what I have found to be m the most helpful for me. That was the biggest hurdle. And it actually was very simple once I figured out how I want to do it going forward. So I will, um, let's start with that in case that's all you're really interested in or need to know. So what you're gonna to wanna to take first is, let me show you this as an example, and I maybe there might be a lot of reaching and, and a little bit of noise, so just a heads up. So the first thing you wanna take is the measurement of your stitched piece. So you wanna do from the edge of your stitching to the edge of your stitching. And let's say, for example, that that is uh, five inches, just for an ease of a number. The next thing you need to know is how much fabric you want showing on the side of your piece when it's gonna be framed. So the, you know, the inside portion of your framing is, is what I'm going to be looking at for my measurement. So do you want a quarter of an inch? Do you want a half an inch? Do you want an inch? Do you want two inches? How much fabric do you want showing on the side of your stitched piece? So you're gonna take that number. So say it's a quarter of an inch. You have to take a quarter of an inch for this side, a quarter of an inch for this side, add that together, that gives you a half inch. So you would wanna cut the inside portion of your framed piece to be, what did I say? Five and a half inches, right? If you want an inch, or say half inch, let's say half inch on each side, half inch, half inch equals one inch, plus the five inches of your stitch piece, that would be a six inch opening that you want. And the measurements that I'm taking are what, when you wanna cut, this is the most thing I think it's hard for me to explain is, the cut that I'm talking about is this inside portion of the top part of your frame. Okay, that's where I'm gonna make my mark, is I want it to cut six inches from here to here, to have this opening be six inches. I'm not worried about the foam core, I'm not worried about the rabbit in the back, I'm not worried about any of that. I'm just wanting to know what do I want the opening of my frame to be from here to here. And so when I'm having my saw, so say I'm bringing my saw blade down, a portion of your saw is gonna hit here and a portion of your saw is going to hit here. And when you're lining this up on your saw, this is the part that you need to be worried about is, is the saw going to hit here correctly? Because if you're lining it up here, it may end up coming a lot farther over by the time it comes down, right? So this is why it's important to know where, what the actual uh, mark is that you're looking for. 
So that's what I do. That's where I find to make my mark. So I would take this, I would take a ruler and I would line it up on my uh, frame piece and I would make the mark here and or I would probably cut, start with one edge and then I would mark from here and I would measure over six and I would put another tick and then that's where I would know I'd have to line it up to have that cut on my saw. I also have discovered that it's better for me to do this marking on this top part of the frame versus the inside of the frame. Let me see um, if I have a frame I can show you. I'm gonna take this off and just show you this one. I don't wanna make the mark on the back of my frame because a couple of reasons. First of all, there's a lot more complication of where am I making that mark, okay? It's not that complicated. I mean, you, you know, it's still the same place. You wanna make it on the inside. But um, when you go to lay this on your saw, it's, you're gonna to wanna to lay it flat. Do you see how there's a profile on the top? So if I've made the mark on the back, when I go to lay it on the saw, I'd have to lay it upside down like this to be able to see my mark and make the, and make the cut. This would wobble. This would not give me a nice, clean, straight cut edge. Learn that by experience. Flat. Flat is better, and so that's why I make the mark on the top of the frame, so that I can lay this in my saw flat and I can see the mark uh, when I'm lining it up to cut. So that's that's the formula. Like that is what will get me the opening that I want, the size opening that I want. I have learned that because I don't have a laser line on my le my saw, um, sometimes I don't hit the mark exactly. I'm a little bit off. It's better to be a little bit long than short because I can't add the wood back. So if I want six inches, I might not cut it quite on those marks. I might try to cut it a little bit to give me a little bit more leeway and then I would shave uh, shave it down if I needed to, if I, if I you know, didn't quite have it at the same mark. The other thing I've discovered is that I will cut one piece, one side. So I'll cut this to the dimension, say I want six inches, right? Then instead of measuring this other piece all on its own, I will line up these two pieces together. I will take the cut piece that I have now and I will, so say this was, let me see if I can give you an example. Say this is the length that I want. I will then butt this up to the other side and make the marks based on the piece I've already cut. I will line, measure, measure the inside to the inside and make the appropriate cuts so that I'm measuring the two lengths to be the exact same width length and I'm cutting again my um, height pieces the side pieces to be the same I would do the same thing on that so I hope that made sense that has been also very helpful for me versus just trying to measure each piece on its own because when I make that cut it might not be exactly it might not end up at exactly six inches maybe it's six and a quarter or six and one you know one eighth or something and honestly the better you can get them evenly spaced and then you go to line up your 45 degree cuts um, and make it a, a square or a rectangle or whatever it is to have it all be the right exact straight dimensions. It works much better for me that way. So I hope that helped and I hope it made sense. Um, let's go forward and talk about a few. I'm gonna show you the, the picture of the saw that I use. I use, like I said, it's electric saw. Again, I'm not affiliated. I'm not showing you this because I say you need to get this exact one. Got this for Christmas last year at Lowe's. It was about $100, $120. I think it was on sale. It's proved to be, it works out fine. I use the blade that came with the saw. I know that uh, Colleen at Lockerbie Stitches mentioned that you can get, uh, if you're cutting plastic, you want something that's more like an 80 to 100 um, tooth, I suppose that's what the, again, not an expert, <laughs> but the saw blade that you would be looking for would be 80 to 100. I have just used the one that came with this particular saw and I, I didn't look to see what that was. Um, okay, so then how are you going to fasten your frame back together? So if it, these are some of the cautions that I want you to look for. The frame is going to be attached in different ways at the back. Let me pull out, uh, let me show you a frame and show you what I'm talking about. So here's just a thrift store frame, right? I haven't, I, I used one that was exactly like this. But if you look at the corners, you're going to see what looks like a metal V bracket. And that's, that's what they are. They're it's a met when you take it out, it's a metal piece that's in the shape of a V and they have just probably used some sort of a, um, there's an electric one that you can shoot these in with. And so they've just put these in the corners. You're not going to want to saw through this. You have to be very cautious about what's in the corner of your frame. This one was particularly, um, you couldn't even see from the back that there was a, um, a st I knew that there had to be some sort of a staple, something connecting these corners. They didn't just use wood glue. So I was very particular about breaking this apart to see what I was dealing with before I ran my saw over the wood to, to use 
the piece. And the reason, you know, you're going to want to cut at the corners sometimes is because you're trying to use every inch of your frame. Um, sometimes you need every square inch of the size, you know, to, to re resize it. But if, if I can cut away from the corners, if I have enough length to deal with and I don't have to worry about it, I just cut a safe distance away. I find the bracket, find where the edge of it is, and I cut safely away from the edges. Um, it's better than trying to break it apart. Sometimes when you break it apart, uh, as you can see, I did on this one, um, you're going to get gout. You're going to lose pieces of, you're going to lose pieces, right? It's going to break apart and it's going to, it's going to take away some of your, your frame with it. This ended up being fine because you can see that the profile or the, uh, the front of it still had enough to look, you weren't going to notice. And I ended up just filling this in with a lot of, we'll talk about that later, but I just pumped a lot of hot glue in the open space. Um, but this is something that, you know, you can break these apart easily quite often. And then I will remove these, the V brackets if I want to use the piece that's left over. But these are all things that you'll discover as you're, as you're, you know, going through the process. Just don't cut the corners until you know exactly what you're dealing with would be the piece of information I want you to take away from that most of all. Okay. So we talked about, so one of the things you need to look at, so say, you want to resize something and you need to look at the length that you have because of the corners again you need to look at the length that you have available it's best if you have enough that you're going to be able to just cut these pieces away and then resize whatever's left uh, sometimes you can't and you want the exact width here or the length and you just want to resize you know the bottom part you, you know you need it this exact width but you don't need it this high so you're going to cut off here and, and use the bottom part um, that's when I have broken them apart to see what I'm dealing with in the corners and to see if I can, you know, if I can use that frame. When I am putting that back together, let me find the piece that I wanted to show you that I glued. Oh, so when I'm putting that back together, I ended up with this huge gap and that's where I just pumped a bunch of hot glue in there. I did just use hot glue on the plastic, um, to put it back together with, and I even tried just regular staple gun, hold on, if I cannot make a lot of noise. I just used a regular staple gun because I didn't have any of those V attachments. I wasn't sure that it would go into the plastic without a kind of a, a, a gun to do it. You know, you can do it. I took a hammer, let me set that down for a second. I took a hammer and a tool to hold on to this, just a little jewelry, needle nose, whatever. And then I just hammered the V in just to see if it would go into the wood, how difficult it would be to put in because it, it went in and you can, so buying some of these again off Amazon or whatever to be able to use to secure your pieces even more than just the wood glue or again, the hot glue. Um, I, I, did, I, did I mention, I, I, I'm not gonna make any promises about longevity here or products or you know whether it's gonna hold up, like I said, for any length of time. This frame is plastic. It's super lightweight. I just hot glued it together. It's not, I don't think it's gonna be a problem. Um, but the, so the glue for, 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 for plastic, let me share you with that. I did ask Colleen. She uh, recommended, it's called Plasti Bond 1500. You can get it online. You can't get it at, like on Amazon or Lowe's or whatever. It's a glue specific for plastic frames. Professional framers use it. I don't have any of that. So for now, like I said, I was just using what is on hand. I'm new to this. I'm, I'm just using what I have now and, and trying different things. But um, I don't put glass. So this is not going to have any weight really to speak of. Um, and I would just, if, you know, if you want to attach a, a hanger to this, again, you can use a glue such as E6000. It's very good for just, it's, it has a very long dry time. So it's not something you're going to be able to use and, um, and use right away. You have to let it sit a good 24 hours or so. I'm trying to reach to see if I can show you a little bracket. So you may want to take one of these and you can just put the uh, E6000 on there and let it sit for a while and that's gonna hold up just fine. Um, you may end up just putting your pieces on an easel if you're not sure that it's gonna be able to something to hang on a wall. You know, don't, use your own discretion. If you have an heirloom piece, a very expensive, something you've used silks and you've spent a lot of time stitching and um, you, this may not be the framing for you, but if you've just got a seasonal piece or something that, you know, you didn't spend a lot of time stitching and, and you're not really worried about passing it down through generations, then that's more what I think uh, this, you might find this more helpful for you. I have, uh, everything I have, I've framed with either a thrift store frame or something. You know, again, I've either used the size it came or I have resized it at this point. And I think that it looks fine on my walls and that works for me. That's just a personal decision though. 
Um, okay, so let me show you, I showed you the saw. Let me show you the, uh, the corner clamp. This is again, uh, something that I saw Rose Heck shared this on her Instagram page. Rose does a lot of reframing, framing. She does a fabulous job. She uses glass and spacers and she paints a lot of her frames beautifully. She does a great job. So she's another resource if you'd like to do some of your own framing and do a little bit more than I'm doing. Like I said, I don't use glass. This was the, um, I'm going to show you the container it came in, but this was the corner brace clamp that Rose showed and it showed, it works beautifully. You just put these in all the corners of your frames and tighten it up. And so when you use your, your glue and you want to set it to like your wood glue, which I'll show in a minute, you would just wood glue it together and set this aside. This again on Amazon wasn't super expensive. That's where I got this anyway. I'm sure you can get it at the stores as well, but I just ordered it off Amazon. Um, so that clamp has been really, really handy. If you don't want to use a power uh, saw, you can use a handheld miter box such as this. Again, this was just something I got online. They weren't, it wasn't super expensive. Uh, you are going to want to perhaps think about the type of the blade that you're using here. This is what came with it, but I know that they sell saws that are a little bit finer. Again, the tooth is a little bit finer, and so you're going to get um, better, maybe a, a nicer cut, a cleaner cut. The challenge I had with not using that and why I decided to go with the power saw was because this is the first thing I tried to cut. It's a pretty thick piece of wood and it took a lot of effort and having to do this four times, I was like, well, that's, I'm not going to do that. Like that was just too much effort. Um, and I don't know. I mean, it made a pretty, a pretty fine, that really wasn't the problem. It made an okay cut, but it was just, it was a lot of work and it really was too much for me. So let's see what else. So wood glue, if you're going to glue pieces, oh, sorry, I, I jostled you a bit. If you're going to use pieces of wood fr framing and it's wood and you can use wood glue, I like the Gorilla wood glue. I tend to, sometimes this can get clogged and you know, it's a bit of a thing to, to put it on. You're going to want to, I would just take a pile, I pour it in the middle of, I put down like a piece of wax paper or something under, cause I'm going to be having glue ooze out. And often I'm doing this on the top of my washing machine. <laughs> So it's at my height. I would just put a pile of glue in the middle and I get a Q-tip and then I just take the Q-tip and I rub the glue along the edges here. You don't want an excessive amount because once you put the pieces together, it's going to ooze out if you put too much and you're going to have to wipe all of that away anyway. So just cover the surface um, completely with a nice smooth layer, not overly excessive, like I said, and um, glue all your pieces. And then when you put them all together and you put your clamp around it, wipe away any of the excess glue that seeps out because you're going to anything that seeps out you don't wipe away you're going to end up having to sand it's it's a lot harder to get rid of after so just kind of make sure you're cleaning that all away um and then just leave it let it sit and let it dry and let it do its thing um like i said for more stability you can put the v clamps in the corner or the v brackets uh i save a lot of my this was another thing i got and i've used this quite a bit i save all of the hardware that comes with my thrifted frames anything you know the wires the little hooks often the wire is going to be pretty it might be a little old and you're going to need new picture hanging wire but i save all of these little things the um the saw tooth hangers that come on the back and this is something i got off of amazon as well let me see i don't know if this helps you at all it's just a little set of um it's just a little set of backs and d-rings and i have used this uh, often because it comes with the the um, sawtooth hangers and the screws that go on the either side so i use a lot of these now going forward some of these pieces that i have simply wood glued together um, most of them are not heavy like i've said there's no glass but say for an example this piece that i shared with you on my last floss tube that i cut down this is um just wood um so i um I will probably not, that's what I was thinking what I was gonna say. I will not put the hanger on the top here because then it would have to support the weight from the glued corners. I was thinking I would just put a D-ring on each side and put the wire across the middle and then hang it from the wire. I think that would be more helpful. I can easily put those V brackets on here. Um, I just, as I said, I don't have any of those as of yet. This was the question I had. Now wood has acid. And when you put your stitched piece against this raw piece of wood, over time, the acid from this wood then may discolor your fabric. So this was what I wondered is, does anyone know, should I seal the wood in some that polycrylic? Um, is there something that I can do to maybe slow that process? Um, again, that would be why I would be cautious with any kind of an heirloom piece because I, I don't have an answer for that. So I'd, I'd love to know if there's something somebody can suggest. 
or recommend uh, spacers. Now for spacers, I don't buy, you can buy those um, acrylic spacers online, um, frame stores and things like that. I even go to, I'm sure maybe a Michaels or something, you can buy them there. I only have one piece that's framed with glass. And I just ended up using, these are just like those furniture bumper, I don't know, it came in a kit, a set of something. And I literally just cut one in half and stuck them in the corners. I mean, it's just a, a hard, I don't even know what this is made out of, but that's all I did. I, again, I have no idea whether that's gonna work or not. I may end up doing that in the corner of this piece because it is wood and, and maybe that'll make it a little bit of a buffer. Uh, you do wanna use the spacers if you're putting glass against your stitch piece because you don't want the stitching up against the glass. And that's why those spacers are important. Again, uh, Teresa Kitten Stitcher has talked about that. She's another one. She had a tutorial on framing. This is, uh, I wanted to share with you the profile. So when you're looking for frames, keep in mind um, that this was a little bit more difficult. As you can see here in the corner, when I talk about profile, it's the what this top part looks like. And this was not going to match up perfectly. I think it's this way. So you can maybe see that there is the piece of wood that is raised. Gosh, I'm trying to find it. You can't see it from straight on, but you can see it from the side. So you see that little bit of the raw wood that's showing because the, it's not gonna match up perfectly here. I'm not an expert and that was gonna be beyond my capabilities. Plus I wanted to use every square inch of this frame and so I wasn't gonna take time to make sure I, I tried to match it. I will just put a little bit of gold leaf, something on there. Um, you could spray paint, you could put a little bit of um, filler on that and then just spray paint the whole frame. That's another option. Um, let me see. Gosh, have I shared? There's a lot of different ways in which, let me show you this frame again. Where did it go? Hold on. Here we go. <laughs> let me show you this frame again. This plastic frame looked like this originally. And this is the, like I said, I don't know a, a good type of glue to use when I talk about a plastic frame. Whatever this composite is, whatever this is, a lot of them are made up of this. Um, you can try hot glue. Sometimes that won't work. Uh, I don't remember what I ended up using to fasten this together. I might have used, I've tried a lot of different glues um, just that I had on hand. But that, again, that's something that I, I would be interested in hearing if you know of something specific. But this uh, looked like this. I painted it, I believe I painted this with a coat of black acrylic paint first. And then I put... I'm pretty sure then I put a coat of the decor wax on top of it. And I think that that really came out quite nice. Um, you can also use wood stain if you're staining over something wood. I've even put this on top of the decor wax and let it dry for a long time. Let me show you another example of that. But this is just this is just one kind of uh, stain. I know that um, Cynthia Brew, hi Cynthia, Stitching in the Light. She has a favorite stain that she uses. I think it's Java. I'm not sure on that, but she loves her, the color that she uses and it's beautiful, right? But that's on wood. Uh, did I show, I can't remember if I showed the E6000. This is the glue that would work good for your fasteners. There, um, Rose Heck again shared this wood filler, something that you're gonna wanna use when you're um, fastening your, your wood pieces together. You can use wood filler. I didn't, I only tried this the one time. It was a bit grainy. I prefer the wood filler that you get in this type of a container and it dries out a lot though I've noticed, but it's just wood fillers that you can then stain over. Um, I use this a lot for my plastic. It's not for plastic, it's for spackling your, your walls when you've got nail holes and such, but I had it and it went, it didn't dry out, it wasn't dry and it went on nice and smooth. And so what'll happen down the road? I don't, I don't know, I'm just sharing with you things that I've done. Um, let's see, some of the, some of the, oh, let me show you another. So this was a frame, it looked like, let me see if I've got a piece here. It looked like this when I got it originally. And I didn't like this color. Um, I didn't think this went well with the fabric. And so I put the, I think this was the decor wax. And then I put the wood stain on top of the decor wax and just really made sure that I, I wiped it a lot, a lot, a lot to make sure it had dried and um, cured and it wasn't gonna come off on my fabric. And, and then I, I think I uh, scraped off the inside, the edges. Again, you know, a lot of this isn't gonna hold up to any kind of real abuse, but it's just hanging on my wall. So that's been okay by me. Just really make sure you, um, you know, take a cloth, take a tissue, take something and constantly wipe it to make sure you're not getting any more of the stain, all the inside edges, everything to make sure the stain's not coming off on the tissue before you put your stitch piece in there. Uh, when you buy your pieces, um, so it has a prior decor piece in it, 
something like this is an example of I just wanted the frame. I wasn't worried about what was inside. A lot of times, this is where I injure myself more than anything, is trying to get these uh, staples out. They can be quite determined and sometimes it's staples, sometimes it's nails, it's all different kinds of things. But sometimes I'll use, you know, a flathead screwdriver to try to pry these out a little bit. Uh, I often use these uh, wire cutters, but I just, to grab on again to things and, and pull and yank and, and cut. Um, I use, oh, when you're putting in, so say you're gonna put in your, your hardware at the top, and this actually ends up being something you would hammer in, but sometimes it has the screws. I have an awl, so it's just a, a it's a tip, but it's something you can press into the circle before you put your screw in, and you press it into the wood, and it makes a little hole, and then you can screw your screw in a lot easier than trying to screw. Sometimes the wood is very, very hard. It can be hard to screw in. So that awl comes in handy, something I use a lot. But that was an example there. Mm, looking around, here's my, if I'm using hot glue, I just have a hot glue gun. This is a cordless one. And so that has ended up working many times so far. Look around, I have notes. Let me make sure all the things behind me, I can, I can try to, do you mind if I'm gonna make a bit of noise? Set a few things there and over here. Um, I have some notes that I had, some uh, some helpful hints again. Uh, Jackie, across my stitches, hi Jackie. She said recently, um, what she does is she'll measure her stitched piece and then she takes a piece of like craft paper and she cuts it out the size of the measurement and she'll write all the information on that. And then she can take that with her to thrift stores and, and when she's looking for frames and it gives her a really good eye of the piece that um, what she would want to fit inside the frame and what it would look like. and. I always keep a tape measure in my purse and a list of things that I'm looking for frames for odd sizes. Odd sizes are really what you want to look for a lot because you know, you can get an eight by 10, a standard size anywhere. So this was one that I just, um, I was able to do pretty well with my corners on this. This is all just glued together. Some of them, I think, nope, it's all just glued together. And uh, so that was a, that was one of the ones I reframed. This was another one. It was probably too tall, too long, something. I had to do something to adjust and I darkened it up with some of the decor wax or I don't even remember what I did at this point if I did the stain or something, but this came out very nice. And this is just, this is again, just hot glued together in the corners. So I would fasten, if I have something that I'm not sure how heavy it's going to be and I wanna hang it, and most of these things, are, they're very, very light, but you could put the D-rings on the side and the wire that goes across instead of affixing to the, the, the hook at the top where it'll have to take the weight of the whole piece. Uh, so that came out very nice. This is another one. This is plastic, super, super lightweight. I was even, even, no, it's not plastic. It's just a very lightweight wood. And so I was able to screw the, the hanger on there. This was another one that I did a great, um, finish on with the, I don't know if I painted it black. I, I scraped off the edge of some of the gold came through. It was just a cheap gold plasticky type frame. And that came out really, really well. That's been hanging no problem there. And this was another one. These are just like standard eight and a half by 11 frames and I was able to cut them down. I had tried this frame for something else and I didn't have my formula down yet. And so it ended up not working. And, but it fit this piece without much of a margin, but it fit. I have a lot of stitch pieces so that if I made a mistake, I was able to just keep going and hunting for more that might fit. Um, gosh, did I say, I, I had already filmed this once and I wanted to, to uh, do it a little bit better. So if I'm repeating myself, please forgive me. But uh, one of the things that I learned about when you're cutting, if you're cutting plastic, you uh, want to make sure that you're cutting when the, the saw blade's coming down, you want to make sure you're cutting it just a lot, just cutting it quickly, um, safely, safely, but quickly. If you're cutting wood, say you're having to cut through something a lot thicker like this, uh, you have to cut a lot slower because you want to let the heat kind of, of the blade work on the wood. And then as you're cutting through, just again, very smoothly and, and, and up again. But um, plastic, you want to cut in one quick move. Where are your hands when you're using your electric uh, saw? Where are your hands? Stop, think, think, think before you uh, use it. Are your hands out of the way of the blade? Wherever it is that you can use clamps. Can you clamp your piece without even having to hold it with your hands? But if you're using your hands to hold it flush, is it, are your hands away from the saw blade, right? Just safety, 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 please. If you're not comfortable, don't do it. Uh, it's not worth it. Um, watch safety tutorials, all of that, right? So gosh, let me think if I have 45 degrees, 
is the is the is where you want to set your saw. Taking a quick look at my notes here, see if I've shared everything with you. Um, paint, spray paint, uh, chalk paint, craft acrylic paint, decor wax. Jackie uh, also mentioned that she has discovered that if you have a more ornate frame, you're not really gonna wanna use a chalk paint, which is a much more flat finish, that it's a lot prettier and shows up all the detail of your the ornateness of the frame if you use more of a, uh, a glossy paint. So that would be more like a spray paint, a glossy paint. Um, I, gosh, I think that's everything. I hope so. Uh, another couple quick, I did see uh, if you're using wood frame, uh, sandpaper, take a just a piece of sandpaper. I'll often just use this, fold this, and rub it along the edges on the inside of the frame so that I don't have any, any jagged edges. When I'm adjusting my linen, I don't want it to snag on anything. So making sure you can do that. And... I think that's everything. I hope so. Uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and, and ask me down below and I'll do my best. Uh, again, if you have tips or helpful comments, please make sure that they're kind. Uh, I have already uh, mentioned more than once, not a tutorial, not an expert, not, not a professional woodworker. Um, I hope this helps. Uh, and let me know if you're doing it, if you're uh, trying it, if you're resizing any of your frames, um, what you found, if you, if you enjoy it. If you've uh, been successful, some of your maybe not so successful stories, <laughs> I just, I, ho I, I hope that this was helpful and uh, I hope to see you again very soon. Take care.